Pingo Hello Paragraphs module can be used with uh, Drupal 8 to create um, visual menus, call to actions, dynamic regions, and I'm gonna talk about a few other adjacent things as well. Um, so I'm also gonna be presenting a case study um, of a recent client site I built where I implemented this idea, which actually inspired me to use paragraphs in this way. So for those of you who never used the paragraphs module, it offers a way to bundle relevant fields together. Um, and it can be referenced like an entity on nodes or maybe even custom blocks. It creates a very clean and easy to use experience for editors. And then for those of you who maybe used like field collections from Drupal 8, or Drupal 7 I mean, sorry, uh, the paragraphs module in Drupal 8 is a very similar concept. And maybe if you've uh, tried to implement field collections on Drupal 8, you'll probably have noticed on Drupal.org if you actually recommend using the paragraphs module to do that stuff on Drupal 8 now. So I'm going to dive into a case study um, right now. The case study for the client site that I just mentioned, their interior design firm in Toronto. So their goal was obviously to create something very visually appealing for their end users. So I'm just going to show you a node right now, the basic layout that they use paragraphs with. So the top one right there is a full width image. That itself is a paragraph type, followed by a text paragraph type right underneath it. And what's actually pretty cool about that text paragraph type is that I used Flexbox with it, which is a way of laying out content in CSS3. And so you can add multiple values, not just one body field for that, and it'll scale accordingly. So you can have two or three or four, and then they'll scale all side by side. I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Under that one, there is a image on top and text on the bottom. That's also using Flexbox, and that's actually a paragraph type within a paragraph type. And then we did that for the reasons of having Flexbox scale it down. So you don't just have to have uh, two there. You could have one, the image would go full width, and the text would go full width at the bottom. You can see how it's two right now, so they're um, half and half. You could do three or four. You give the client a little bit of control that way, so you kind of have to rely on them and their expertise that they're going to use paragraphs in an appropriate way. So they can create something very visually stunning. Under that one, there is a image row. Same concept there with the scaling uh, text or scaling images. It's using Flexbox, so you don't have to have just two images. You can have one, two, or three. Um, and then under that, there is an image left and or image right, text left. Uh, there's also one not displayed here, but on the site there is kind of the opposite: the image on the left and then the text on the right. And then at the bottom, there's another image row. So you kind of see there that there's three images. It's the same paragraph type as that top one image row, but there's three in that row instead of two. It's also really cool because it gives you that drag and drop functionality for the editor, for the client and the site editors. So just say they do create this page and you decide, you know what, I don't want that two images on the top. I want that one at the bottom and the three on the top. They can easily do that without having to re-enter their content. And so what that does, I think, for the client, it gives them like an easy to use experience. It's very clean. And then it gives them the flexibility to create cool layouts that are going to be really engaging to their end users. Not all the nodes they create have to have a uniform layout. They can use um, what I was talking about with the scaling row text and the scaling images to create these very flexible, these very different uh, layouts from node to node. And so I think that's pretty cool. So why should you use paragraphs? Like I said, it's easy to use. It's quick to set up. And it provides clients and our site editors a powerful tool to have like a lot of control over the site. I find that Drupal can sometimes be overwhelming for clients, especially the ones who have never used it before. And so when using paragraphs, it kind of creates that really easy to use, consistent experience. Because not only can you use these paragraphs um, in Node, you can also use them in custom blocks as well. And so, like I said, it creates a very consistent experience. You only have to use, learn how to use paragraphs once and then you can use it in different types, parts of their site. And like I said, you can use custom uh, paragraphs in custom blocks as well. And what that happens there is when you place, just say you place a custom block in the sidebar region, you can create these paragraph types which almost become like these widgets. So you can have uh, promotional content, maybe contact information, a slider. Um, and so in theory, that whole sidebar region now becomes very dynamic. If later down the line they don't want contact info, they don't want sliders, they can take all that stuff out and put new stuff in. So that's really good for any like, promotional content. If you're updating their site a lot, they can call users to different parts of their site. They can maybe use it as a simple way for advertisers to put in advertisements. And then, yeah, like with paragraphs, you have the freedom to create any kind of widgets that you really want. 
And so I'm just going to give a quick demo of the uh, site I was just talking about for my case study, and I'm going to show you how a site editor would use paragraphs and how they could reorganize parts of their site. So this is the home page, the top part of the view, so it's not using paragraphs, but this part is. So as you can see, they're just basic call to actions all the way down to the bottom. So let's say later down the line, well, when we first we initially built it, makeovers is really important to them. That's what they're gonna use to call in the users, to give them ideas to use makeovers in their own home. But let's say later down the line, that shop one becomes more important. Do you wanna give that one the priority? So they can easily drag that shop call to action up to the top. So this is the back end of it. I like to group my fields together into a fields tab because I find that making it dragging around uh, paragraphs makes it a lot more easier, especially when you have multiple like theories on the home page. So I'm just gonna collapse those, bring shop up to the top, and save. And you can see that now, obviously, shop is on the top because it's later down the line now. It has more priority over makeovers. And then that gives the client a lot of flexibility to reorganize their home page. Um, and then you can also have as many or as little paragraphs as you want. You kind of give them the control in that way. You can set a limit or you can have them unlimited. This one specifically is unlimited. So if later on the line they want to add a whole bunch more, they can do that. Maybe they want to remove some and they only want three instead of the four or five that are here. That's also an option too. Like I said, it really gives your client a lot of control over their site. So I find that they really like that. They find that their site is really their own. And it's great for development because it's really quick to set up. It's easy to use for the client editors. So I feel like there's minimal development time spent and a maximum impact. There's also paragraph types being used at the bottom here in the footer region. Same concept. You can have as many or as little as you want. The design for this one is a little specific where it's always going to have um, three in a row. So you, like I said, the client has a lot of control. With great power kind of comes with great responsibility. You're not just going to have four and then one kind of hanging out, right? You have either three or six. Or maybe you don't want any of these at all. If you look here, you can actually have, I've actually included other types of paragraphs you can include on this page. You don't have to just be a basic call to action. So later down the line, if you don't want any of these, like you can remove all of them and you can put in maybe a basic text. And then it gives you that WYSIWYG so you can put different kinds of content. You can maybe, this one's on full HTML, so you can put uh, MailChimp snippets maybe if that's something you're interested in. It doesn't always have to be the same content. You're really giving your site um, editors and their clients complete control over these regions. And then I'm just gonna show you real quick um, about that scaling text row, just so you can kind of see that in action. So I'm gonna edit this page right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, text paragraph here. Right now it's full width, and I'm gonna make it maybe two or three. So I'm gonna open up my paragraphs tab. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. We're gonna save and keep published. So now you can see it's two side by side. And so I think that kind of speaks to the power of how you can create these really interesting layouts, really different, not all the nodes are gonna be uniform, and it gives this client complete control over um, how they want to display their content. And I think it also gives them the control to just play around with it visually. If they create something, they don't really like how it looks, they can go back and easily drag and drop or take things out. I'm also going to show another demo in just a little bit of a visual menu that we had to create for them. And the visual menu, the goal was to, like I said, have something that was gonna be easy to use, easy to reorganize, something that they could play around with until they have something visual that they feel comfortable with, and which is really what inspired me to create this idea and to, not create this idea, but to use paragraphs in this way. So it was Okay, so why should you use paragraphs? I feel like I've already kind of touched on a couple of things of why you should use paragraphs and why you can use them in nodes and custom blocks. 
Um, but I do feel like it works really well, especially if you have promotional content or if the client has parts of their sites that they're going to be updating a lot. Uh, if they're going to update things like maybe the shop, if you want to call to that more often, then they can do that. And so I'm now going to show you the demo of the visual menu which I created, so I can show you kind of like how that would work. So this is the visual menu. It's a little bit more um, styled and a little bit more intricate than what you saw on the homepage and on the node for that makeover. So there it is, and I'll show you the back end of that. So this is the back end, very similar to what you saw before. There's a little, much, a little bit more going on. I included this color picker field so that you can kind of like sample colors from the images that they uploaded which was really going to give um, them better control over what was going to show on the front end. They can add images later down the line that's different. They can move this around, so let's do it again. Maybe at one time this portfolio becomes a little bit more important than makeovers. You can drag it up. You can save. And you can see that that's now switched. You can also use this to maybe put in more text. You don't always have to have the same things over and over again. So I'm going to remove this bottom one. That's another thing I really like about paragraphs is that you don't just remove it and it's gone. You have to do confirm so you can't accidentally remove content and then it's just like never coming back. But then also paragraphs you can use revision. So if that does kind of happen, you can revert your revision and go back. So I'm going to add up text. Just choose a color for it. Uh, maybe let's make it like orange. That's fine. And I can see there in the bottom that you have another section for text, maybe because you don't want have another section at the moment that you want to call to, or you want to give more of a description of why they should navigate around the site, which is really what the end goal is for this client, is that they didn't just want to have something to show to the users, they wanted to, really wanted to engage them, they wanted to encourage them to move around the site and to navigate to different parts, which is another reason why I think Paragraph is so interesting, because Right now, visually, this works, but like later down the line, things could change. They can reorganize it to, until you have something that they feel comfortable with. The priorities change down the line. There's different parts of the site that they want to call the users to, so it just becomes very flexible. Especially if you're using like custom blogs and paragraphs in almost all regions and parts of your site, you can almost have a very dynamic site as a whole. It becomes, you give the client a lot of control over the complete site, which again, I find that they really like. Like I said, little time to develop, little time to learn because it's very consistent whether you're editing a note or a custom block, maximum impact for the end user and a very happy client. So when are good times to use paragraphs? So like I said, it's really good if you have promotional content. Maybe you want to have like custom widgets, like I said, sliders, contact information. And if you really want to give um, control to your client over the site, create a very dynamic site as a whole, dynamic regions. Um, yeah. So at this point, I'd just like to like take a side note because I think I've talked a lot about giving your client a lot of control over the site. Paragraphs and giving kind of client control over the site isn't always appropriate. This client in particular, their design firm, they're already visually like focused on design, so I felt it was appropriate to give them that control, but not always appropriate. Like I said, great power comes great responsibility. You kind of have to trust your clients and their expertise that they are going to use appropriately and create something very visual. And then other use cases that I think that could work, like I mentioned, contact info, slider widgets, a simple way to display advertisements. You can also reuse these paragraphs in different regions, which is something I thought was cool because you can have the same paragraph type displayed differently in the sidebar than it does in the footer. 
in which I think adds to the consistent factor of for your site editor. They already know how to use the paragraph type, the basic call to action, but having it display differently and act differently according to what region it is, I think adds to the consistency of the site editing experience. So before I conclude, I'm just going to show you a quick demo and a quick tutorial of how you would set up these paragraphs. So I just have a basic Drupal 8 install here. All right, so I already have the paragraphs module enabled. You can also enable the custom mo uh, block module, which comes in Drupal 8 core. So the first thing you do is you gotta add, add your paragraph type. So you go down to structure, paragraph types, you add a paragraph type. I'm gonna call this one Drupal North. And then you add a field to it just like you would um, a content type. So I'm just gonna add a text field. in there. So I'm just going to create one basic paragraph type with one field right now, and I'm going to add this to a node into a custom block. So let's do the node first. So I'm just going to build upon the basic page content type. So you're going to add a field. For the field type, you're going to do a paragraph, review, uh, paragraph field here. We'll call it paragraph. So this is where you can kind of give um, the limit, right? So if you want to have the client give add as many as they want, as many call to actions, or as many whatever you're creating, or you can give it a limit. I'm going to do a limit for now. We are going to reference this paragraph type here on Drupal North. That's the one we just created. And now it's on to that basic page content type. And then you can see that it's there. So you can add another one and as many as you want or as little as you want. And then it works the same way if you're going to do it for a custom block as well. So we have a custom block library here. There's already one that comes with it, which is this basic block. That's the one we're going to build upon. Add a field, and it's exactly like you would for a node. So we're going to place our. Sorry, first we're going to create a block. And then there's our paragraph right there. So, in conclusion, oh, it's quick. In conclusion, um, you should use Paragraphs because it gives your client a lot of control. It's quick to use, easy to set up, as I've already mentioned. So, little development time, maximum insight for the end user, and you can use it to create a very dynamic site as a whole. You can use it in one region. Maybe you don't even want to use it in any regions. Maybe you don't even want to use it in custom blocks. But I think you should maybe even consider using it in your nodes, just for your site editors. And that is it. Thank you, guys. Right. Is there any questions? Yeah. Yes. Uh, when you showed us the uh, menu, yep. uh, I saw that uh, you had uh, things that took like uh, space uh, vertically, and then horizontally, and then a square. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, manage to uh, make it uh, beautiful if you change uh, the paragraphs uh, from uh, not having like uh, empty spaces. Right. So you mean like um, I guess it depends on how much content you want to add. Like like I said, I think it, when you give the client that kind of control, it's up to them to create something very visual. Yeah. Um, but you can have implement character limits just in case you are worried about that, right? So for that text field specifically, maybe you know that if you add too much text, it's going to stretch and it's not going to look appropriate. 
and you can implement character limits uh, for your client to just kind of be aware that they are adding too much text. Um, but I think ultimately you are giving the responsibility to the site editor. But the, the question for me is that uh, if you put uh, like uh, one vertical thing and then after uh, a square mm -hmm. and then another vertical is going to... How, how are you discussing to uh, place the different blocks? Uh, so there's no empty spaces? Um, so that one is... You, you have a, you, are you using to split suite? Uh, this, no, this is just styled with... Um, so that menu block is just styled with uh, CSS. Um, so this one has a limit, like I was saying, you can have unlimited paragraph types or you can set a limit. Yeah. This one does have a limit set, so you can't set any more than that's already there. So I think your question is like, how would you make sure there's no empty space there in the corner if you didn't want that one? Nope. So did you hard set the dimensions for each one? Sorry? Did you hard set the dimensions for each one? Yeah, like this is uh, styled specifically for like so what the you want. The first one is always that? The first one is always going to be that vertical. That second one is always going to be okay. that wide. So is that answer your question? Okay, so if you move, uh, so portfolio is the first one and makeovers yep. is the second one. Is if you switch them, makeovers going to be vertical? Yeah. So that's how it was originally. So we'll collapse those fields. We'll bring that one up to the top. And so that's like the drag and drop capability that um, I think is really powerful, especially for the site editors. They can kind of play around until they find something that they have that they're visually comfortable with, right? And like I said, priorities change on the line. So like maybe press at one time is going to be more important than portfolio. They can move that up. It's going to be to display a little bit bigger. It's going to engage the user a little bit more to go to that page. Um, so yeah, just paragraphs using with a little bit of CSS and a little bit of responsibility on the client side. I think it's really effective. And uh, how do you make that? Is that like in CSS it says uh, first paragraph is like that, the second one is like that? Yep. Yeah, so like there's um, this is a custom block, right? So the custom block would be the container, and then all the children under it are these uh, blocks that you see right here. And so you would just target that first child, right, to display this way. Okay. So you have, uh, like, uh, in your CSS, you have uh, taken care of uh, a certain number of childs, and if we add more, there's going to be a generic way of handling that one. Uh, correct. So you can't, like I said, you can't add any more. But you, there's a limit on, on yeah, there's a limit for this specific block. Of the CSS. Yeah, um, but you can take them away, right? So, like I said, with giving the client kind of responsibility, you wouldn't just remove this bottom block because you're going to have empty space. You might want to remove all three, and then you would still work with these uh, four and then the text in the middle. Okay. okay. So yeah, so it's a mix of maybe certain freedom and yeah. certain structure. Yeah, I would say so. Any other questions? Yes. Is there a way to make that work with panels so that you'd actually be able to do some of that rearranging on this screen? Um, you could, because you can use custom blocks within panels, right? This um, custom block, what about the fields and paragraphs within the block? Because each paragraph type within this would be what the person would want to make a on this screen. Right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Like I said, you can add custom blocks within panels. So you could move this block around regions if you were using panels. I kind of like to think of it as a lightweight version of panels. It's not as intricate. You can't add views to it. But um, you can move content around in different regions using paragraphs. You can also panelize uh, paragraphs. Oh, I didn't realize. But um, that sounds cool. I'd like to look into that a little bit more. Is there any other questions? Nope. All right, thanks guys for listening and thanks for letting me do this.